In today's video on old tech, I wanted to share with you this book that was uh, given to me by uh, one of my ham radio friends and uh, YouTube subscribers called The ABC of Electricity. Now what's really interesting about this book, and notice it's not very thick, is when it was published and what it contains and certainly even what it doesn't. This book was actually published in 1889. So to think about uh, what existed in the terms of technology for electricity in 1889 and certainly what didn't. So it's fun to take a look at what's in here and how it's presented. Now one of the more interesting things uh, right at the beginning of the book is this uh, endorsement. It reads, uh, Dear Sir, I have read the manuscript of your ABC of electricity and find the statements you have made therein are correct. Your treatment of the subject and arrangement of the matter have impressed me favorably. Now what's really interesting is this endorsement was given by none other than uh, Thomas Edison. You can see from the laboratory of Thomas A. Edison, September 4th, 1888. Now if we think about uh, the state of electricity in 1889, uh, kind of exemplified here by this second paragraph of the book, it talks about the telegraph, the telephone, the electric light, electric motors on streetcars, and electric bells, etc. There wasn't a whole lot more to it in the late 1800s. So as imagine, the book is not very thick. So it's interesting to take a look at how the, uh, the material is presented. Now, of course, Ohm's Law was introduced in 1826, so the concept of the volt, uh, the ampere, and the ohm were well known in terms of describing electrical properties and principles. However, this book was published a couple of years before Lorentz published his theory on uh, electron theory, so it really wasn't known that uh, the current flow was really the flow of electrons. So uh, it's interesting, interesting to see how things are presented here. In fact, uh, this book presents the concepts of the volt, the ampere, and the ohm using the typical uh, water analogy, which a lot of people use today, where water pressure is kind of equivalent to, uh, to the volt and how much uh, push you've got in terms of pushing current. The current is essentially the flow of the water, okay, and the ampere there. Um, and then the resistance would be the diameter of, uh, you know, of the pipes, for example. So that was how the whole concept of, you know, uh, volts, current, and resistance are presented uh, in this book. Now the relationship between electricity and magnetism is also presented because that was uh, fairly well known in terms of how uh, electricity can be uh, produced by using magnetism and magnetism can be produced uh, with electricity for things like electromagnets and that kind of a thing. And of course, you know, all of that uh, led to a lot of the early development uh, for electricity and some of the early applications. You know, the first one of those is uh, the telegraph. Of course, the telegraph uh, back in late 1800s consisted of a typical Morse code key and a sounder. Uh, we didn't get the familiar uh, beep beep beeps that we hear on the radio today, but uh, it was more of the, the clicking of a sounder and uh, just uh, consisted of essentially a DC circuit uh, pulling on an electromagnet to create a sound with effectively a solenoid. And what's really interesting is that the Morse code that is presented here in the book is not the same version of Morse code that is commonly used today around the world. Uh, what the Morse code that's used around the world today is called International Morse, uh, although this Morse code here is actually known as uh, Morse Landline Code, or also known as American Morse. Uh, many of the letters are the same, like A and B are the same as they are in International Morse, but like the letters C and uh, several others here, O, uh, are not the same as that are used today in, uh, in inter International Morse. Well, the book goes on to describe uh, the telephone and an induction coil and how that's used to uh, create essentially a speaker. Uh, it talks about a vibrating diaphragm uh, and then talks about uh, some of the microphone type uh, of technologies, uh, early one called a, phone, a phonomotor. I'm not sure if that's the, that's the way it was actually pronounced. But then talks about the carbon button uh, microphone element and how all this kind of came, to, came together to create the telephone. Interesting quote from the beginning of the chapter on the telephone here is that, uh, you know, not only can we talk to a person who is in a different part of the city, but such great improvements have been made in these instruments that we can now talk through the telephone to a person in another city, even though it might be hundreds of miles away. Now, the next part of the book deals with the electric light and uh, deals with essentially just two different types of lights, uh, arc lights and incandescent lights. 
and uh, talks about the, the arc lamps and how some of those uh, were very bright, typically used in things like uh, street signs and that kind of a thing, but had a relatively short life, some of them only 8 to 10 hours or so. And then talks about the incandescent bulb and how that typically is used in uh, you know inside and things like that. But uh, also talks about the problem of power generation because you know while the telephone and the telegraph are low power devices that were typically powered by batteries, the electric lights consumed a lot more power. So we needed a different way of generating power. And then introduces the concept of a dynamo or dynamotor, uh, which is uh, used for essentially. Uh, uh, power generation for a power grid. So it talks about the, the development of these dynamotors uh, to actually create the electricity for used for uh, primarily electric lighting. It even presents uh, the, the concept here of, of series connections and the limitations imposed by series connections for electric lighting in that uh, you need a, a very large voltage from the dynamo to make that happen uh, versus uh, running essentially in multiple arc, which is essentially the parallel connection of uh, lighting across a uh, power grid. Next is a couple of pages on electric power in the form of electric motors for doing things like uh, operating a sewing machine or a railway train, that type of a thing. And it just presents the basic concepts of electric motors and uh, using uh, magnetism and electricity and uh, to essentially create rotating machinery. And next we present a bit on, uh, on the different types of batteries. Uh, primary batteries uh, you know, for producing essentially DC current. I will call, talk about the Leclanche battery, the Law battery, uh, and uh, you know, certainly these battery technologies are certainly far removed from what we use today. But uh, these are, this is what was uh, common back in uh, the late 1800s. Uh, it does actually talk a little bit about um, you know, batteries used for electric lighting, uh, connecting batteries, you know, multiple batteries in parallel and in series and, uh, and what happens when you do both of that. And that also talks about secondary or storage batteries or what we know today as rechargeable batteries. And that's it. <laughs> that's kind of the extent of uh, electrical technology from uh, 1889. So pretty interesting little book. Uh, let's see, priced at 50 cents. Let's see, 50 cents back in 1889 dollars. Geez, that was probably a better part of a day's wage, I would think. So, um, anyway, I um, thought this was an interesting little book. I think I might wind up actually donating this to uh, as an Edison Museum, not far from where I live here in New Jersey, uh, at the Edison Tower. And they've got a small museum there. I thought maybe, especially given the endorsement by Thomas Edison, that they might like having this book in their collection. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this short little video. Uh, not really uh, vintage tech so much, but uh, just a look at uh, the state of technology, you know, nearly 130 years ago. Thanks again for watching. If you liked what you saw, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. And we'll look for you again next time. Take care.